Marine Cook, we are welcoming you to a live edition of CKL Wednesday to Atala. And we remind you that views and opinions expressed by our guests and our callers during Didiwatala, not necessarily those of 97.3 CKL WEN or the Aquazesti Communications Society. And uh, also a reminder, the phone lines are open. Uh, we do have an uh, uh, individual uh, that's taking the calls. So if you have any questions having to do with our health uh, services for the tribe or MCA, and also the Eastern Ontario Health Unit. Uh, we are looking at providing information today with regards to COVID-19. This is part of our series we started yesterday with elected leadership, also our emergency response officials at the EOC, and today it's health officials. So I've got uh, the best health minds here in the territory of Aquazasa joining us today. I am very glad to be able to sit down with them and find out the very important information for our community as health and safety of everyone is always our top priority. So with that, we're going to welcome to the studios. Uh, we have uh, Syringes Mohawk Health Services from the clinic in Hogansburg, Dr. Ben Kelly. He is our medical director uh, at the uh, health services in Hogansburg at the clinic. We also have Teresa Gardner. She's a family nurse practitioner, and uh, she is also a uh, outreach supervisor. And uh, both individuals have been with our uh, clinic in Hogansburg uh, for decades. And uh, wealth of knowledge uh, and caring always from those two individuals. Also joining us today from the Mohawk Council of Aquazasa, uh, the Holistic Health and Wellness Program, we have Janet Brandt. And uh, she is our nurse practitioner under uh, the Holistic Health and Wellness Program. We also have Dr. Horn, and she is our primary physician for the Holistic Health and Wellness Program. Keith LeClaire is joining us from the uh, Mohawk Council of Aquazesti. He is the director of the Department of Health. And we also have Dr. Paul Ramoliotis, who is the medical officer of health for the Eastern Ontario Health Unit. And all of these individuals uh, are uh, going to be talking to the community today. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about COVID-19, some things to do, some things not to do, uh, some things that we need to look out for. And also with regards to our clinics and our health facilities, um, some of the uh, different restrictions that are in place and other ones that have been uh, added to uh, implement the services that uh, they provide, uh, you know, with regards to going uh, uh above and beyond uh, with regards to uh, some of those things that have been incorporated for uh, both uh, sides uh, for the Sibridges Mohawk tribe and also with the Mohawk Council of Aquazasna. So we're going to uh, say sego and uh, welcome uh, to uh, all of my guests here today from 97.3 CKL WEN talking about uh, COVID-19 with our health professionals. Sego and welcome everyone. Thank Good morning. You. Thank you. Uh, so glad to uh, to be able to have all of you here today uh, and all of you uh, online as well. Um, so I think what we'll do is we're going to start with uh, Dr. Ben Kelly, uh, who is our medical director uh, of uh, uh, the Sybridges Mohawk Health Services uh, to uh, to open up our program today. Sego and welcome, Dr. Kelly. Uh, thanks, Reen. Thanks for having us. Um, as usual, CKN always steps up when there's a community need or an emergency, we all appreciate that. Um, I, I thought maybe I would just uh, start with, as of this morning, I think at 6 a.m. in the world, there were slightly over 201,000 cases of COVID. Most of them have been in China and around 8,000 deaths. In the United States, the incidence is around 6,500 with 116 deaths. Now the flu, on the other hand, uh, up until March 7th, there were about 45,000 documented cases. So it's, it, I don't want to minimize the COVID, but I think we're forgetting about other things too, like the flu, which is very uh, prevalent and more, m most of us are more likely to get. But Anyway, I, that's sort of my opening statement, I guess. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, we also have uh, on the line, as we mentioned, our director of uh, the Department of Health for the Mohawk Council of Aquazaste, uh, Keith LeClaire. Sego, and welcome, Keith. Ah, what are you doing? Thank you, Reen. I just want to tell you Sego? that basically... The Sego, can you... Okay.
Gilbert has a case now um, that um, we just want to keep people well. That's our, our main concern. And um, I know that everybody wants to do their regular appointments at the medical clinic, but this time it's not possible. We have made it an acute care clinic where we're only going to see sick people. Um, and, bef and we're also asking people to call before coming to our clinic. Um, you have the numbers 518-358-3141, and a receptionist there will direct you to one of the nurses to do a screening. And then um, for medications, we are actually asking you to call ahead. We're doing curbside service, and you can call 518-358-3141. Uh, Four eight seven seven, and that is the outreach number and they will answer the phone and we will have somebody bring medicines to your car now for elders who cannot uh, come or can do not we can deliver to them on on the reservation excellent so we're we're just trying to help in any way we can we want to keep our staff well we want to keep the community well um, so um, it's very important that we follow those things Perfect. Uh, again, uh, that's Teresa Gardner. She's our family nurse practitioner and outreach supervisor uh, for Sybridge's Mohawk Health Services. Uh, we'd also like to say welcome to uh, Janet Brandt, uh, nurse practitioner for uh, Holistic Health and Wellness Program. A lot of people uh, work with uh, Janet Brandt over at Go and Get Medical Clinic. Sago and welcome, Janet. Sago. Thank you, Reen. Um, I think just to say a little bit about what's going on. These are very, very trying times. And um, if everyone can just have just a little bit of patience with us as we sort of work through the kinks and um, figure out how we're uh, doing our day-to-day -day operations, because as everyone knows, it changes uh, almost minute to minute. Mm -hmm. So um, please, you know, be assured that we are working hard behind the scenes trying to keep everybody's medications um, up to date and getting uh, renewals and um, getting things that people need. Um, it just may not be that we can see patients face to face more on the telephone. Perfect. Um, so again, that's Janet Brandt, nurse practitioner. Uh, and let's go to Dr. Horn online. Dr. Horn, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, how are you doing? And thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. I um, have um, been working hard at home. I've been in isolation since uh, Friday evening. Um, and so um, just waiting for my uh, test to come through to see whether or not I can uh, start working again. But I've been working here at home going with my uh, computer and phone and been quite busy nevertheless. But I wanted to um, stress the importance that there are some people, many people in our community right now who are getting um, um, treatment for cancer, for instance. And these are considered essential services. So. Um, People who have to have active care of, of, uh, of their cancers um, are extremely vulnerable, and they're the ones whose families have to be very um, aware of who they come into contact with and who they, um, and, um, and, and of course, what they could be bringing into their, um, into their family's home. We want to keep these people who are actively getting treatment to uh, stay safe because they are very, very um, immunocompromised. And anybody who is on insulin for diabetes, who um, is on anti I mean, uh, metabolite or strong medications for their um, um, immune um, diseases like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, are also very, um, very uh, vulnerable to um, not doing well with this infection. So there's a lot of people who we may see um, who look very well, that actually um, are very vulnerable. And so we all have to do our part to stay away from from these people so that we don't, uh, you know, un, uh, unwittingly give them something like the COVID. Thank you very much. Again, that's uh, Dr. Horn uh, talking to us. She's our primary physician for the Holistic Health and Wellness uh, Program under uh, Gunung Gonzalo at the Mohawk Council of Aquasase. We also have uh, Dr. Paul Ramoliotis, and Dr. Paul joins us as the, uh, he is our uh, clinical director, uh, medical officer, I should say, of uh, health, rather. Dr. Paul Ramoliotis, medical officer of health for the Eastern Ontario Health Unit. And we talked with uh, Dr. Paul 
Paul uh, when they uh, started the uh, uh, NAVCAN uh, quarantine from the uh, people from the Japan ship that came here to Cornwall. So he was uh, very involved with that right from the start. So he's had a lot of experience uh, as well uh, with regards to dealing with COVID-19 and things that we're learning about uh, uh, COVID-19 day by day. So Sago and welcome back, uh, Dr. Paul Romoliotis. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me back, and I really appreciate what you're doing. I think uh, some others have echoed uh, the fact that it's very important for radio stations like yours to uh, be able to provide the latest, uh, you know, reliable information. And what I've been hearing from my colleagues uh, before me is excellent because what we're trying to do collectively is really um, stay at home. I mean, the new model that we have is stay home, stay safe, and by doing that, you're protecting yourself, you're protecting others. What I want to say uh, before that, though, is, um, and, and by the way, the excellent, all the things that are being done, you know, make sure you have your medications and, you know, uh, doing stuff over the phone, that's excellent. Um, one of the things that you, you may have heard is that uh, uh, the uh, province of Ontario has declared an emergency situation here. I just want people to understand that that doesn't mean that we have rampant COVID uh, illness. As a matter of fact, I think one of, the, one of my first colleagues uh, on the phone said, we have more flu than COVID, which is true. Uh, however, because what we're seeing around Europe and around, as, as a matter of fact, Europe right now has as many cases as China. And so we're seeing many, many more cases and we're seeing that it takes a big toll on the healthcare system. And because there's no vaccine, there's no effective medication uh, to the, to, uh, for, the, for this uh, COVID-19 virus, which, by the way, in most people just causes a mild symptoms. It's the 10 to 15 percent of the population who are elderly, who have medical conditions, uh, who, have, who have need hospitalization and unfortunately may die, a uh, small percentage, however. However, that's, it's important to know that. So one of the things that we're doing is what we call public health measures. And the first one uh, is really the same that I will tell you for the flu. Wash your hands, cough and sneeze into, uh, cough and sneeze into your sleeve, uh, make sure that you stay home if you're sick, uh, and so on. Those are the things that are quite important. At the community-based level, right now we're at the, po at the, at the, at the air level where we've got what's called public health measures, and they're very basically community measures which started from sc closing schools, um, and what our ma aim is to get people not to crowd. The more crowded you are, the, the more chance the virus has to spread from one person to another. So far, the cases that we've had in, in this area here in, in Ontario mostly are, are brought in from other parts of the, the world, and they're imported cases. But what we're worried about and what we don't want to happen is that then but we get cases where people get it from one to another who, who have not traveled, and that's called community-based transmission. So we're not there yet, but it, it'll happen at some point. So our goal is to collectively work together we closed the schools, we closed restaurants, we closed all kinds of things, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, daycare, cinemas, movies. Those are all where people congregate. Schools are closed because kids, although they, they, they can get COVID, the good news is that uh, they get very mild symptoms, but they can give it to the grandparents and others are in the community. So that's why the, the schools are closed. And then secondarily, the other thing that we're doing, again, is making sure we have the social distancing and, 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 and really... What we're trying to do is make sure that there's less virus going around in the community so less number of people get infected. And that's why, because the more people get infected, the more people who are vulnerable will get infected, and that's a bigger number. So we want to decrease that number as much as possible. From the point of view of a healthcare setting and a healthcare system, what we're trying to do as well is trying to ensure that people uh, who need hospitalization or need emergency room go to the emergency room. And we are preparing uh, here and, and uh, other areas, including Agwasasi, for assessment centers if necessary, so people can get, be assessed either over the phone or through virtual, through online, and not necessarily go to the emergency rooms. But for now, I want to make it clear that we've had you know one case in our area. Uh, in the East Ontario area. So far, it was imported uh, from um, uh, out of the country, and we're keeping an eye on things because at some point, like I said, we will get more cases, and there may be, um, we may have to limit even more. For example, right now, we're limiting uh, people getting together when there's more than 50 people. I know that some states and some other are doing it 10 people or less. We have to look at that. But right now, uh, uh, everything. Like I said, with the exception of uh, restaurants, bars, uh, and those type of things, other retail stores are still open, malls are still open at this point. But as we move forward, we may have to expand those. And really, it's, it makes sense why we're doing it. 
If there's less people running outside, uh, especially for a couple of week period, the virus can survive. The virus will die and will get much less, less community spread. So by staying home, and what we're saying to uh, workplaces is, if possible, uh, work from home. If not possible, ensure that people are spaced out, uh, spaced from one to each other, have a couple of meters or five to seven feet between them. Ensure that you have, you know, washing stations, uh, a hand sanitizer in place, and ensure to screen. If anybody's sick, stay home. That's very important. And in general, the elderly, uh, people over 70 years old, should stay at home and not go out at all. And as, as much as possible, stay and or work at home. Uh, because that's our best way of ensuring the virus doesn't survive and uh, and the least amount of people can get infected at the same time. And that's our goal, and I, and I think that collectively we can do the trick. Very good. Again, we're talking with our health officials here on Dead to Watala. This is part of our series that we're doing uh, to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and how it's going to affect our community. Uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Horn uh, was disconnected uh, from our uh, discussion. I do apologize uh, for that. Uh, for our listeners uh, that won't be able to uh, hear from Dr. Horn, I can always do a separate program just with her. So please don't worry about that that uh, dr horn if you're still listening uh please know that we're uh keeping you in our thoughts uh, we thank you for everything you do and thank you for uh, uh self-isolating as well uh, and we hope that you get uh, better quicker okay uh dr horn thank you very much um some listeners uh questions uh anybody could jump on uh, here are over-the-counter drugs effective at all such as aspirin moltrin uh, or moltrin rather advil things of that nature go with dr ben on this one um, in general yes if you have a fever um tylenol motrin aleve things like that will help a fever they will also help aches and pains uh, that often come with not necessarily the covid but a lot of respiratory cold symptoms um, it is recommended that you probably shouldn't take aspirin if you feel you have the flu. That has nothing to do with COVID. That's, a, that's something we've always tried to dissuade people from taking aspirin. Uh, you know, if you have a dry cough, certainly cough syrup is fine. Gargling, um, uh, you know, have all the Buckleys that you want, I guess, uh, you know. But I guess to answer your question, yes, it does definitely help, but it's not... It's just going to help you wait it out, and, and, and hopefully it goes away. Now, I know uh, some of the symptoms of COVID-19. Um, commonly reported uh, symptoms include uh, that fever. We have the fever temperature over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, or as John W. would say, 38 degrees Canadian. Uh, the cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, and sore throat. Uh, so if you have these symptoms and they are not due to a pre-existing health condition like asthma or emphysema, you may have COVID-19 and must stay home. That We're taking this from the, the uh, some of the Department of Health uh, uh, pamphlets and uh, flyers and information that's been put out there uh, for the public to, uh, to stay informed. Um, do you have anything uh, with regards to the over-the-counter drugs uh, being effective, Janet? So uh, use of uh, Tylenol or acetaminophen, ibuprofen would be recommended for fever and aches. I'm not a big fan of cough syrups. If you have um, problems with um, cough at night that you can't sleep, I would definitely say yes. But I believe my belief is your body's doing what it needs to do when it coughs, as long as you're protecting others from the spread of infection by coughing in the sleeve or um, into a Kleenex, disposing it, washing your hands. Um, I, I think that's uh, ab about it. Um, you know, there's certainly lots within the community about elderberry tea and elderberry syrup, um, uh, the fire cider vinegar. Um, lots of people are using them, and my thinking is that if it works for you, do it. There we go. Yeah. Thieves right. is great. 
There you go, thieves. Yeah, they were. I uh, saw a meme that had a big helicopter full of thieves uh, ready to sprinkle it uh, on the community. So uh, it's interesting how uh, how people um, take care of their families. There's lots of different ways to do it. Um, we just want to make sure that we're always careful. Make sure you're getting your health information from a reputable source, uh, especially online. Go to the CDC. Go to uh, WHO. Uh, you can keep an eye on the Eastern Ontario Health Unit. Also keep an eye on MCA and Sibridge's Mohawk Tribes uh, pages as well. Uh, and I do have another question from a listener. How far do you recommend that people limit their travel? Uh, and uh, Dr. Paul, do you have anything on this? We'll start with you. Well, we're recommending people stay in their in their country, not travel abroad. If you're a Canadian, if you're on the Canadian side, you stay in Canada. If you're on the American side, you stay in the States. Uh, that's what we're recommending. No international travel unless it's essential. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I personally, I will not travel at this point. Okay. And, Very clear. And I think that uh, uh, people are probably wondering maybe Cornwall, Messina, Malone uh, for Aquazasano. Teresa, what do you think about that? Um, I have to agree that travel is definitely not the way to go at this point. Um, I think if you can, if you're traveling to something that's got more than 10 people, what the United States is telling us, um, that you should avoid that. And even for when you come to our clinic, uh, we just in student in, did a new policy this morning saying that if you've traveled outside of the 50 mile radius, okay. um, that's what we've, we're asking people at this point in our clinic. Okay. All right, so 50 mile radius would be uh, uh, great to uh, to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, anything on your side, Janet? I think you need to be uh, conscientious of where it is that you're going. So if you are traveling to a center that already has known cases, such as Ottawa, uh, well, Cornwall now has one um, case. I think you need to use common sense and judgment whether the trip is necessary and, um, you know, what is the purpose of the trip. Um, for MCA, as an employee, we are on a very short leash, so um, our travel has been restricted to uh, just the surrounding area. So um, as it stands now, Cornwall, Messina, Malone, we are okay in, but nothing further. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Paul, uh, looking at the, uh, the, the ways that it can be transmitted, we'll start with you on that one. How, yep. how is it transmitted? Is it uh, a lot of people are uh, talking about it being airborne or droplets. Can you explain that for us again? Because you broke it down the first time. Yes, I can. Uh, this virus, just like the flu and other cold viruses, is, is transmitted from one person to another through droplet spread. In other words, little tiny droplets of water uh, that contain the virus. So when one coughs or one sneezes, uh, the, the droplets can, can travel up to so maybe five, six feet, and then they'll either land on a person or they'll land on a surface like a table and so on. So that's why we say the distancing, if you're, if you're more than, you know, seven feet, we say two meters here in Canada, but if you're about six, seven feet away from one another, then that, the droplets won't reach you. They do not get airborne. That's what we, the difference is. And one person can infect two people, but I'll give you an example. Measles, for example, which can be airborne, one person infects 18 people because it goes on in the air. So that's a big difference here. The other thing that we need to be aware of, so that's why you need to cough and sneeze into your sleeve, you know, don't, and, and don't, don't be closer than a couple of meters from one another. Uh, the other thing, too, is when, when one coughs or one sneezes, uh, they, those droplets can actually land on a, a surface, or a keyboard, a tabletop, a doorknob, or whatever. And the virus, we know, can live for a, maybe a day or two, maybe three days on those surfaces. So it's important to be wash your hands a lot, especially uh, before and after when you touch keyboards, uh, because what can happen is, you know, you don't see these, they're invisible. So let's say now I'm sitting now on my desk and I, somebody sneezed on my keyboard or coughed on my keyboard, you know, yesterday, and I touch the keyboard and then I scratch my nose, I'm actually transferring the virus into my nose. I'm breathing it in, because you breathe it in, that's how it gets into your lungs. So it's very important to wash your hands, disinfect all the surfaces as regularly as possible, and, and again, try to avoid touching your face, because that's what it is, we contaminate ourselves. So it's direct uh, contact with somebody who's less than five to seven feet away from you who coughs or sneezes, or the indirect contact when you touch a surface that somebody has coughed or sneezed on with these invisible drops uh, that you can't see, that then you can infect yourself by touching your face or your nose. All Very right. important distinction. 
Okay. Uh, anything on that, uh, Dr. Kelly, for uh, with regards to uh, how it's spread or uh, uh, the droplets and things of that nature? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with uh, what Dr. Paul said. Certainly, uh, there was uh, one of the news shows uh, showed that, you know, when you cough out droplets and they go out into the air, gravity pulls them down and they settle often on the floor or on any surface. That's why uh, most medical offices are probably uh, cleaning their exam rooms and offices more often and more aggressively than they usually do. As a matter of fact, each nurse at our clinic has their own little squeeze bottle and they're hitting doorknobs, light switches, the, the bars where people support themselves when they walk. So it, it probably wouldn't hurt you to have that at home as well, a little squirt bottle for the, the computer keyboard, your counter in your kitchen, uh, things like that, the, the kitchen table where people sit. Uh, it, it really does help and supposedly this virus is very sensitive to a lot of disinfectants and the 60% alcohol that it does do a good job with it as, as compared to some other things like tuberculosis and clostridium which causes diarrhea. Uh, that, that's my understanding anyway. So you can definitely busy yourself uh, positively by scrubbing frequently used services. Now, I do have another question with regards to the hours and the services. So we talked about uh, the services over at Sir Richard's Mohawk Health Services, the clinic. We've turned it into an acute clinic setting. So if you could give people the hours for that clinic, uh, then, uh, uh, and of course, we always want to make sure before you're going anywhere, uh, we want you to stay home first of all, but if you have to go somewhere, if you feel sick, if you need to seek medical attention, call first so they can uh, talk to you on the phone and we can uh, process a screening and go from there. So what are the hours of operation, uh, Teresa? So we're open right now from 8 until um, 6. Um, we're doing curbside service until 5.30 with the pharmacy. So anytime, if you can call your meds in earlier in the morning, it will make a difference so the pharmacies can get them ready. And then what we're asking people to do is to call that 518-358-4877. And then you'll give your name um, and what your um, car looks like. And then we will deliver. And actually, I'm sorry, it is to 5 p.m., the pharmacy. Okay. Okay. Um, and what we'll do, like I said, it's curbside service. Be patient with us. You know, I, yesterday I understand there were quite a few cars uh, lined up. Mm -hmm. um, we are on limited staff. As you know, we've gone down to just essential. We've gone from, um, we're trying to keep the staff around 50 is what they're telling us. Um, so um, just be patient with us. We're, we're trying our darndest and each and every person will be individually uh, assessed if they call in. Um, and, and we're, we're working closely with public health. So if you call with these symptoms, um, what's going to happen is that we're going to bring you in. Um, we're going to put a mask on you. You know, you're going to see the nurses wearing masks and gowns as well. And then um, we're going to put you in a room and we're going to assess you for the flu, first of all. Um, you know, try to figure out if there's something else other than COVID-19. And, you know, we've had a lot of flu, A and B. So um, yesterday we had a young child that the pediatrician was, uh, was uh, worried about, but ended up being the flu. Um, so I think um, if I can just ask patients to bear with us that we will call each and every one back. And uh, if you need to come in, you will be seen. Perfect. Um, so uh, let's go with uh, Keith LeClaire. Keith, are you still there? Oh, yes, I am. I think really one of the things I want to share with our community is, is, again, our focus and our essential strategy is to slow the spread of, of COVID-19. It's not like it's going to go away. We know that it's going to be arriving, but the quicker we can slow it down. That's why, you know, the right approach right now for everybody is to cancel everything that you can. I also want to acknowledge the, the uh, staff basically our, our essential medical and support staff that are there. I know a lot of the other programs have now closed down or are dropping, but I think too much important that we have to be aware. In order for us to provide the best service possible, we have to have our staff 
as healthy as possible. So bear that in mind. We are putting in basically a support to be there, but also we do have to make sure that, you know, we don't have to self-quarantine our own health professionals and our support staff. Because the bottom line is, is we're there to provide service to the community. We will always be there for you. But bear in mind, the reason why we're saying is to stay at home is to make sure that the spread doesn't go. And I think Dr. Paul identified that very clearly. It's not necessarily the people that have it we have to worry about. It's our it's ourselves to make sure that we may have something. We have to make sure that we're not spreading it with other people. And then Yao for the opportunity to be here today. Keith, can you let me know uh, uh, if you have that information, the hours for the clinic? I know Janet could probably give me uh, uh, a good uh, estimate as well. But uh, how you guys are handling your clinics uh, for the Mohawk Council of Aquazasa, for Aquazasa Medical Clinic, and also for Gowanoga Medical Clinic. Keith, how are we handling that? Well, right now, we are providing support in exactly the same thing. If you have an issue, please call in. We have our phone number, 575-2341. If there's anything that you need, because right now, we're, uh, right now we are functioning as best we can, and the reality is, is we will always be there. But as Dr. Paul has also identified, make sure that if you have an issue to call in. We've also put in in our own sector as well, um, we are pushing the social distancing to the max. And in fact, bottom line is, is uh, if you have any questions, by all means, do give our office a call. And if it's outside of normal business hours, Telehealth Ontario is available for any concerns. And let me share with you that number. The number is one 866 797 that number would be, again, if we're, if we're facing it. We are continuing with our essential services. Our 24-hour ambulance services continues to function, and we will be there if there's a need to support you. I know that uh, we, uh, again, make sure that when you call the ambulance uh, that they're going to be screening you and they're going to be asking you questions at Central Dispatch. Please uh, make sure that you're providing that information. Uh, and also, don't just show up at a clinic, a health facility, a hospital, any type of emergency room. Please don't just show up. Uh, you need to make sure you call so that these people are uh, protected. Uh, Keith had a great point. Um, the, the reason why everyone's doing this is so that it doesn't overwhelm our health care system uh, and as much as uh, our health uh, officials uh, that are on the line with us love our community uh, they can only love it so much and sometimes they get burnt out sometimes they get tired sometimes they get sick so we're trying to make sure other people don't get sick so they don't end up sick so it's it's not uh, uh, anything to uh, to really uh, just blow off we have to make sure that these people are okay and the first thing that we could do to help with that is for you to stay home second one is for you to call ahead before you go uh, and take every precaution that people talk about, especially that uh, social distancing, physical distancing. Uh, make sure you're at least six feet away from people. So uh, please be careful out there. So anything else that we need to pass along that uh, our uh, health officials uh, uh, would like to do uh, information-wise for the community? We have Dr. Ben. Uh just two brief things. Number one, probably in the next several days, at least in New York, there will be more tests available and the number of positive tests will go up. That does not mean people should panic. It just means that now they're testing it. So, and one other thing I was going to mention is the question of elective surgery. If you are having a knee replacement or a uh, removal of a, a skin lesion, things like that, you probably should consider canceling it, not canceling, but postponing it if you can. I know some of the surgeons w will say, oh, no, we'll still do it. But as, as the consumer, you're the boss. If you don't want to have your knee replaced and be in the hospital and be around all these things, just say, no, I want to postpone it. It's your decision. I like that. You're the boss. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Hey, Dr. Kelly said I'm the boss. <laughs> Actually, you are the boss of your health care, and we try to get patients to own their their, their health care, you know, because um, it's you're really the one running the show. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, testing-wise, that was one thing that I did want to make sure that we knew. If we need to be tested, if our health professionals feel that we need to be tested, those test kits will start to be more available, Teresa? Well, we're hoping, but right now, like you said, everything, if we have a patient, we are directed to call uh, public health, and then public health is directing us where to send them. Okay. Um, and my understanding is, is that you know, uh, Plattsburgh is opening now. Um, a drive-through screening is what I'm hearing. They're trying to get personnel together for that. Um, who knows? Malone may be next or Messina. Um, but at this point, public health is running the show. We run everything through them, and then we proceed with how they tell us to go. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, on the, the northern portion, uh, Janet, do you have anything uh, to add with regards to testing or, um, you know, how that process works? So our process is to um, forward any uh, suspicious um, calls that we feel may be COVID to um, community health in St. Regis, and they will screen from there and talk to public health. So it all, it's the same process. Yep. Um, it all goes through public health. Okay. Uh, did uh, Keith or Dr. Paul have anything to add with regards to the availability of testing? Dr. Paul? Dr. Paul might have left. He had an 11 o'clock. One okay. of the things that one of the things that we have discussed though is is basically is the potential for a, a possible testing site. I know Dr. Horn and I are talking about potential where it could be your HEO or something, but it cannot be in one of our one of our existing clinics. Uh, we have received uh, through Dr. Paul the checklist of what's required for setting that up, and again, as it rolls out. The big concern that we're going to have to do is, is as we move forward on this one is to make sure it's clear what is going to be the priorization for people to be tested. And I think the emphasis is basically it's for, for our elderly and most vulnerable po population. But right now that's at the discussion stage or we are looking at that as the Department of Health. And uh, we will be moving forward once we actually have the involvement from Ontario Public Health but it is our intent to ensure that we do have a testing site somewhere in our community. Perfect. We're in the planning stages of this, and please allow us the ability to make sure that we can do the rollout. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, as we wrap up uh, here today, uh, Keith, we'll uh, start with you. Any closing comments on your side, Keith? I think really the only thing I really want to do is acknowledge our staff our medical staff and our medical support staff that are there because again bear in mind as other people are starting to close down we still have to carry on on this and i also want to give a special mention too to both sides on our emergency operations center personnel because again like i said well they're the ones that are doing the coordination for us as a community we do want to make sure that they stay safe and ensure that, again, they can provide the service just like us in, us here with the, within the medical component. The important thing is, is that we will continue on and we will make sure that the community is safe. Okay, now. Thank you. Take care, Keith. 97.3 CKOM from the heart of Akwazase. That uh, was Keith LeClaire uh, wrapping up with us uh, online. Uh, Keith LeClaire, Director of the Department of Health for the Mohawk Council of Akwazase. Dr. Paul Romoliotis was our Medical Officer of Health for the Eastern Ontario Health Unit. Uh, and he had to leave the conversation. And unfortunately, Dr. Horn's connection uh, uh, gave out uh, after she had spoken to us the first time. So again, we uh, have good wishes for Dr. Horn in hopes that uh, everything is good for her and uh, that uh, she gets stronger every day uh, battling her illness. And as we uh, say uh, wrap up time for uh, Janet Brandt, uh, nurse practitioner uh, for the MCA Holistic Health and Wellness Program. Uh, Janet, do you have any closing comments? I just want to say to everyone that, um, again, these are trying times. Things change so quickly and we're trying our very best to keep up. Please be patient with us, and um, we will do our very best to make sure that everyone's issues are addressed, and it may be in a different format than what we're used to. It probably will be over the phone, um, but we will try to get um, everyone everyone's needs met. 
the Perfect. best way we can. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for all that you do for our community. Well, we appreciate you. it. Thank now, you. 97.3 CKLM from the Heart of Aquazese. And we'll wrap up uh, Teresa Gardner, family nurse practitioner. Uh, do you have any closing comments? Um, I'm going to say the same as Janet said, that we're going to try our darndest to take care of everybody. And the one people that we have not talked about is the housekeeping staff. Um, those guys are working diligently to keep, like Dr. Kelly said, the rails, and it's literally impossible to do. It's, uh, but So a shout-out to them. Shout-out to the nurses and the providers that are all working. Um, we're, um, like, we're doing it in a different way, and it's different for us as well. We like that face-to-face -face contact, so now we're trying to assess over the phone, which is a little more difficult. Yeah. But um, um, bear with us, and we will get through this. Excellent. Thank you so much for everything you do for our community, Teresa, and have done and continue to do. We appreciate it. And Dr. Ben. Uh, again, I'd, I'd like to uh, compliment CKON. I mean, you're out, you guys are always... A good forum to have most communities don't have something like this and uh, Rian you always shock me with your knowledge other than your sports teams I mean your, your choices <laughs> there aren't that great but watch it, anyway. <laughs> watch it Mr. Sox Mr. Red Sox I'm a Yankee fan through and through and my Cowboys uh, are you a what are you Colts yes See, I, uh, I even have a file cabinet in my head of our favorite team. So uh, it's always a pleasure to, to be with you guys. Thank you again, Dr. Ben Kelly, for uh, joining us today. Teresa Gardner, uh, Janet Brandt, and also our guests by telephone, Keith LeClaire, Dr. Horn, and Dr. Paul. Nyawagoa, guys, and please uh, uh, pass along our thanks to everybody, nurses, support staff, janitorial, uh, everyone that is helping out in this manner and changing the way they do things so that we can can uh, adapt and take care of our community with our basic needs uh, being met. Health and safety always. Take care, everybody. 97.3 CKL went from the heart of Aquasasne. Uh, that will do it uh, for Dedewatala today. We remind you views and opinions expressed by our guests and our callers during at Dedewatala, not necessarily those of 97.3 CKL when or the Aquasasne Communication Society. And we also would like to pass along on behalf of the Syracuse Catholic Church. They will be canceling their masses on Saturday and Sunday. Private masses will be available by appointment only in the rectory. 